Chick, you doing a good job. 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 You see these kids, you doing a good job. You see your work, you doing a good job. You living in purpose, you doing a good job. You finding your joy, you doing a good job. Chick, you doing a good job. Chick, you doing a good job. Chick, you doing a good job. Let me tell you why. Keep listening. <laughs> Hey, 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 guys, thanks for tuning into the Journey to Purpose podcast with me, Erica Lasan. And I'm excited for this conversation today because a lot of people don't know the 24 7, 365 work that goes into being a full time stay at home parent. Well, if you don't know, you're about to know because that is exactly what this conversation is about being a stay at home mom and welcoming you into our world. One feel good thing being this conversation at a time. And if I'm being completely honest, this conversation is an unintentional continuation of last week's conversation. Mom guilt, more specifically the mom guilt that comes with pursuing a life of purpose and passion, and also the mom guilt that comes with being a full-time stay-at-home parent in addition to being an entrepreneur. Because let me tell you, the juggle is real okay at one point while i was editing the podcast i kind of realized that i was going on a little bit of a stay-at-home mom rant and when i say rant i mean it in the lovingest of ways i just realized that i'd been talking about being a stay-at-home mom for more than 20 minutes so i happened to take all of that conversation out and i pulled it so that i could include it in this week's chat as we talk about what it takes to not only be a mom but be a stay-at-home parent this conversation is for anyone who may be considering um, leaving your job or leaving work um, or the corporate environment to stay at home with your kids full time so that you're prepared for what's to come because at one point I realized that I wasn't prepared. It's not an easy life to live and it does come with its challenges but as I shared in last week's episode it also comes with so many blessings that outweigh the challenges that you're sure to face. Um, So I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the full scope of the experience though really and truly having this conversation wouldn't even completely do it because Hearing about it is one thing and living it is something completely different. And lastly, this conversation is for the stay-at-home moms, okay? To let you know that you are not alone in what you're experiencing on a regular basis, this episode could also serve as your mouthpiece for all of the people who think that stay-at-home mom living is easy. So listen, sis, if you're going through it and you're like, people just don't know what I go through on a regular basis, I wish that I could tell them what I go through on a regular basis, Um, if only they knew on a regular basis, feel free to share this episode and I'll say all the things for you. (laughs) The more we're able to have these open conversations about what it actually takes to be at home with your children full time is the moment that we're actually able to come to solutions and help each other and support each other in this beautiful journey to um, raising children. And I'm just putting it out there for all of you who are watching on YouTube. If at some point you notice that I'm going back and forth between outfits, that's part of the reason why. Because half of this conversation came from last week's rant (laughs) and the other half of it is being done this week. So without further ado, let's hop into this convo, shall we? But hold up, before I get into that, (laughs) I also wanted to highlight some of the reasons why this is a conversation that is worth having. I think that a lot of people, when they think of stay-at-home parents, they think, oh, you're sitting around all day. You have all the time in the world. You don't have to work. You don't have to be up at a certain time. Let me tell y'all something. Times have changed. They have changed. Those days of being a stay-at-home mom where you could sit around, eat snacks all day, (laughs) watch daytime television, lounge as you smoke your cigarettes, those days are no more. (laughs) With the new society that we live in and women being expected to contribute to the household and also managing all of the responsibilities that come with work while also having responsibilities and domestic duties, It's very hard to juggle the two. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. When I initially became a stay-at-home mom five years ago, it started off from me being laid off from a company that was closing its doors. And in my mind, I thought, you know what? 
whatever it's great i will take this unemployment because while i'm home i can work on some projects i'll take care of the baby i'll be able to catch up on some things that i've been wanting to do it'll be easy street let me tell you what it has not been the past five years easy street because there's so much unconsidered work that goes into being a parent in general but especially being a stay-at-home parent let me tell you what there isn't in your home personal space there is absolutely no personal space ever if you follow me on social media at erica lasan on instagram there are some days where i am literally sitting on the tub writing out messages where one kid's on the potty and the other kid is sitting on the sink and i'm just waiting for them both to be finished so that i can get back to a table <laughs> and there are other days where i just want to have five minutes to myself to think about my thoughts and sometimes those days do not come like Honestly and truly, if you are a parent, then you know that the quietest times of the day are usually early, 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 early in the morning before your children arise, unless they're waking up at 5 30, 6 o'clock, like mine, <laughs> or late, 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 late at night, <laughs> maybe say around 8 or 9 o'clock um, after the kids have gone to sleep. And at that point, you only have a limited number of hours to do anything. And then if you're really, really lucky, you may get a little window of time in the middle of the day if your kid still gives you naps. All right, right now I'm at a, <laughs> at a point in my parents parenthood journey where naps are non-existent. <laughs> Aria phased out of them a long time ago and Jace is, he, he's getting there. Then throw on top of that right now, the situation that we're going in with quarantine and coming out of a pandemic. A lot of parents are schooling and teaching their children at the same time, which comes with its own challenges and difficulties on top of the fact that a lot of parents are still working from home. Constant asking of snacks, mommy, 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 mommy. The 101 questions that usually comes with just kids growing up and being curious and inquisitive about things. There's the constant cleaning because you guys know, kids are messy. And then at some point, it gets really noisy as children get older. They're playing more. If they have siblings, they're playing together more. And it just gets really, really loud. Throw on top of all of this, the fact that there are also domestic duties and chores that need to be done on a regular basis, like sweeping, washing dishes, cooking because everybody's got to eat and then if you have girls there's also the conversation about keeping their hair neat <laughs> or maybe that's my personal experience i think i'm telling on myself a little bit right now it can be hard to keep up with all of those things and then if you throw entrepreneurship and as i'm sure is the case with many of you even if you just have a side hustle it requires a lot of work sometimes it can feel as though you literally have no space left to think about anything like anything my business even being built around joy with all of the fun and exciting things that come with it is something that i think about constantly i was speaking with nick my husband a couple of days ago and he told me you never turn yourself off <laughs> You never turn yourself off. And this is a conversation that I will definitely be having on this podcast in a couple of months. Being an entrepreneur requires constant thinking ahead and follow-ups and sending out emails, conceptualizing content, ideas, having meetings, setting up site updates, and all of the other things that are involved in the process. And if you have a team that is wonderful, you still have to delegate, which requires you being able to express your ideas in some way, shape, or form whether it's drafting an email, having a call, taking notes, it requires time. I can't tell you how many times I as a mother have experienced mom guilt because of the fact that my business uh, takes up so much of my mental space, even with all of its joy. At one point, very, very early in my stay-at-home mom career, because yes, it is a job, I had to let go of the notion of having mom guilt. And even with having this awareness of it, every once in a while, I, it still creeps up and I have to talk myself down. 
The mom guilt is always present and it will run you ragged if you allow it. Early in my stay at home mom career, um, while building my business, I felt really guilty about the fact that my kids hair looks a mess sometimes, okay? like. Their hair looks crazy sometimes. I am so close to locking <laughs> Jason's hair. I also don't get to clean up as often as I'd like. Sometimes things get a little dusty. Listen, I shower every day, but sometimes that shower doesn't come until really late at night. And most days I am still wearing my pajamas until noon, all right? Don't judge your girl. <laughs> the juggle is real. How many of you can relate to any of that? Your kid's hair not being done, your house looking like it's a little out of order, having to smell yourself midday to make sure that things are still copacetic, okay? All of these things exist when you are a stay-at-home parent or a work-from-home parent that's just trying to do the best you can with what you have. And I am here to let you know that it's okay. You are still a good mom. You are still an amazing parent. And you wanna know how I know? Because I'm sure your kids give you hugs, give you kisses, and tell you how much they love you. That's always my litmus test. And I was able to ditch the mom guilt because the evidence of me being a good mom was in the pudding. The pudding being my amazing kids. Our kids are phenomenal. They are kind, they are generous, they are loving, they're super, super smart and intelligent, they're caring, they're articulate, they're emotionally intelligent. All of these things come as a result of spending time with them at home and being with them, but also not neglecting parts of who I am. There are days when Aria will randomly come up to me and she will give me a hug on my leg or around my waist and say, Mommy, I love you. Mommy, I have so much fun with you. This really got to me. One random day a couple of months ago, Aria threw her arms around me and said, Mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a mom. Like, what? What? That is not something I ever thought of as a child because to me, when I thought of motherhood, I thought of struggle and not being able to be my full self. But our five-year-old thinks that it's absolutely amazing and fun um, to be a mom. She also wants to be a doctor, okay? So listen, I'm like, go for the stars, girl. Talk about a proud mama moment. The point is you're doing a good job. The fact that you're even thinking about this while you are home with your children means that you are doing a good job. Find your way to joy. Continue to pursue your purpose and everyone in your life and in your home, including yourself, will be better for it. Let's talk solution. At this point, that's what we need, right? Solutions and understanding how to overcome some of these challenges and obstacles. For all of you stay-at-home moms, I want to encourage you to first speak up. If you notice that you are feeling some type of way, understand that your feelings actually matter and your feelings mean something. Verbalize those feelings, whether you're overwhelmed and feeling overwhelmed, whether you're feeling tired or whether you're feeling unproductive, understand that the first step in finding your joy throughout this journey is gaining clarity about how you feel and then expressing it so that you're able to get it out. Because the moment you start holding all of those things in, that becomes the moment where you're robbing yourself of your joy, but you're also putting yourself in a position where you could have a blow up at any moment and nobody wants that. I like to think about this in three ways when you're having a conversation. Talk with yourself so that you're able to kind of like iron out the feelings. Then talk with your creator. And this is where prayer comes in and it's such a beautiful thing because prayer does not have to be complicated, okay? I think that a lot of times people think of prayer in really hardcore, heavy ways when really prayer is just a conversation with God. So have the conversation and it may even be as simple as talking to yourself, but you're really talking outside and setting your intention on the Lord. Um, so talk with yourself then talk with God and then after you have clarity after running through the conversation with yourself um, and your creator so you've gone through the things now that aren't making you feel good twice then talk to other people 
Because at that point, once you're bringing the conversation to other people, whether it be your friends, whether it be your family members, um, or even your spouse or your children, you would have had time to process and digest the things that are actually making you feel some type of way so you can articulate it in a way where you can actually get to a solution quicker versus ironing out the conversation back and forth with them and saying things like i don't know i just feel like i just feel like i just feel like but then you're not really saying exactly how you feel and I think that one really clear way to help you start with this process is to journal. It could really be something as quick as doing a brain dump and jotting down bullet points about how you feel in any given moment. All right, step one, speak up. The second thing that I would like to encourage you guys to do is to get up and play. Um, I know that sometimes when you are a stay-at-home parent and you're like doing all of the things and dealing with the children in a way where um, it feels like work, sometimes play can get lost. But play is a wonderful way to free your mind of the things that are keeping you clogged up and bogged down. Um, the moment you're able to embrace a world of play, you're able to find freedom, even if for a moment. And the great thing about finding play and embracing it, especially when it relates to your children, is that it's an activity that frees your mind, but it also allows you to create bonding moments with your children and the people around you. Another thing that I think would be really helpful is having conversations with other people around you so that they know what is going on with you and they can know how to support you. Because here's the truth, if they don't know, they don't know. Someone can't help you if they don't know that you're going through something. I know at one point in my motherhood journey, I was feeling a lot of things and I felt the need to limit myself from expressing them to anyone else because I didn't want anyone to think that I was weak. I didn't want anyone to think that I was complaining about being a mother. I didn't want my spouse to think that I wasn't doing my, um, my part in taking care of the household because I was at home versus being out in the working field and making money. Um, on a consistent basis. So I didn't want him to feel as though I wasn't pulling my weight. So every time I had a feeling about um, this mom life, <laughs> I kept it to myself. And at one point when I like kind of went off on him, he said to me, and this was kind of like an aha light bulb moment for me. He said, Erica, but you never said anything. Pew, right? How can your partner, how can your spouse, how can your family, how can anyone know to help you if they don't know what you're going through? The next thing that I wanna share as far as a solution is for the people who are listening, who aren't necessarily stay-at-home parents, but got stuff to say about <laughs> those who are stay-at-home moms um, in terms of how they keep their home, in terms of how their children look, in terms of um, how they are essentially choosing to live their life in taking care of their children versus working. Stop doing that, okay? It's unproductive for everyone and it makes people feel bad. Um, but more than anything, you don't know all of the intricacies that are involved in their day. And trust me, it's a lot. Rather than coming with criticism, whether you think it's constructive or not, how about you offer a helping hand, okay? <laughs> Ask the parent where they could use some support. And let me tell you what support could look like, all right? Because it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could literally be something as simple as, hey, I noticed that you're, you're, you're maybe feeling a little busy. Would you like me to watch the kids for an hour one day a week? Or, hey, I know that you're probably so tired of cooking. Could I offer to bring you food once a week? Or could I cook a meal for you and the kids once a week? Grandparents, you don't know how much of a blessing this is for the moms who are working from home. Like, my mother-in-law does this for us every week. Every Sunday, she drops off. Sunday dinner for us and we have food from Sunday to Wednesday and it has been the absolute blessings of blessings and this is something that started after we had Aria first like and I don't even know I well it was God I really want to say that it was God placing this on her heart because we never asked her to do this but after Aria was born that first Sunday that we brought her home from the hospital my mom in love came to the house with the tray full of food i'm talking rice and peas um jerk chicken some steamed
came with all of this food and we didn't have to cook for the longest and after that and this is now going on five years she continues to do this every Sunday bringing us Sunday dinner and it is so freeing for both myself and Nicholas to just know that that is one less thing we have to consider as we are busy building businesses going to work raising our children and all of the other things that just come with managing parenthood if you don't think that something is nice or according to your taste um offer to do it instead sometimes people talk about Arya's hair because i can braid her hair do i have all the time in the world to braid her hair no i do not so in moments when someone's like just do these girls hair mommy i'm talking about you i love you <laughs> um i say well you know if you feel a certain type of way would you like to help me do her hair and it has happened where i have taken aria down to baltimore when we would go to visit and her hair has looked a hot mess i will admittedly say so but i mean really where do we go we're home i'm not trying to impress anybody and so i would take her down to maryland after a while of not having her hair done and my mom would braid her hair and it's been a blessing to just know that the moment i began to speak up about how i felt about things I may have felt like I was drowning. The people in my life who I expressed this to were willing to step in and help me pick up the slack in areas where I felt like I was failing. And it's a freeing experience. But it also is something that I find has strengthened my relationship with those women as well. Now it's time for me to speak specifically to those of you who are stay at home parents. Listen here, I want you to come real close as I tell you this, okay? I'm gonna need you to ask for help. I'm gonna need you to ask for help. When you need it, ask for help. And here's another thing. If someone comes to you, because this also falls under the umbrella of asking for help. If someone comes to you and offers you help, take it, okay? I don't know if it's a thing of pride. I don't know if it's a thing of ego. I don't know if it's a thing of feeling like we are able to handle all the hard things because if I'm being completely real, sometimes that's also conditioning. I'm gonna need you to let that go, okay? You're making your, your motherhood experience less joyful than it could be if you were to just accept the help that's being offered. Take it, okay? This does not mean you're weak. This does not mean that you're not doing your job as a parent. This does not mean that you are any less worthy of the praise that comes with being a caregiver and a lover and a person of do person who is able to do all the things. This does not make you any less incapable of doing the things. But what it does allow you is rest. What it does allow you is support. What it does allow you is ease and peace of mind. What it does allow you is an opportunity to recharge and regroup so that you can operate with more patience and love and empathy and all the other things that are sometimes lacking when you are taking on all of the responsibilities and all of the things that are needed to care for everyone else all right accepting help allows you the opportunity to put yourself first for a moment and figuring out what brings you joy but also like what your purpose is so that that way you're able to charge that part of your life as well and here's another thing and then i'm going to get off of this but when someone offers you help it's not because they feel sorry for you it's not that they're they're doing it as a handout they're doing it because they love you if someone is offering you help they're doing it because they care for you and they see that you could use a moment so take it <laughs> take it don't feel some type of way about accepting it all right now that we've gone over all of the solutions and there were many probably a lot more than i was planning on putting out i want us to talk about a joy gem because all of this is nice in theory all of this is nice in practice all of this is you know based on some experiences that i've had but there are also some supporting words from the big man gld himself to encourage you in this season of your life so I'm ready to drop some joy gems and I hope you're ready to receive them. Let's go with the first one. The first joy gem comes from Romans 5, 2 through 5. And it says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. 
Oh my goodness, that's such a word. Like, I really want to go in, but I also really want to preserve your time. Um, I really want to start a Bible study. I really want to start a Bible study. Let me know in the comments of this video if you're watching it or um, on social media, send me a DM or something if you guys are down for a Bible study because this is something that God has placed on my heart and there's just so much that I, I could say about this scripture. But the main thing being in any moment where you feel as though things are less than optimal, in any moment where you feel as though things are less than perfect or less than your desired um, way, understand that God is all up and through the mix, okay? But not only that, you're gaining so much from the experience, whether it be a trial and tribulation, whether it be a moment of hardship, whether it be a moment of just not understanding. In all of those things, you're gaining the gift of perseverance, character, and hope. And the reason why this is so important is because when you have hope, you understand that all things come to glorify God no matter how ugly, how messy, or how inconvenient they may feel in the moment. And it says here that hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he's given us. The Holy Spirit is always guiding you. If you are a child of God and you understand that God's hand is on your life, you also know that he is always guiding you and sometimes it can be in the faintest of whispers sometimes it could be in a fleeting seemingly fleeting word that someone gives you sometimes it could be something that comes across your daily reading or your bible reading however often you read it that is there to motivate inspire you and keep you going but as you continue to go through your journey to purpose you're also adding elements of character and perseverance and this is really what ultimately helps you land where it is that you want to be but even better than this because god is such a good god that's always planting gems it's not a matter of solely where you want to be but it's a matter of where he's always desired for you to be as well okay like sometimes we get so caught up in our own desires and the things that we want for ourselves but the moment we find that there's flow in our life the moment we find that things are getting easier for us or that we're like achieving our dreams and landing where we've always wanted to be understand that those are things that God has placed on your heart because he has intention for you in that space he has things that he wants you to do he has people that you he wants you to touch he has actions that he wants for you to take that will all ultimately come back to glorify his kingdom glorify his work in your life and ultimately glorify his will for your life it's not just about you and what you want to do okay and this is why this so excites me because when you understand that God is all up in the mix and when you understand that he is doing a wondrous work in your life you stop taking things so personally and you get still in understanding all right Lord and communicating with God all right, God, what is it that you want me to take from this moment? What is it that you need me to understand about this time that I'm in so that I can get to where it is that you want me to go? All right, hit me with an amen if you've had an experience like this. <laughs> All right, the second joy gem that I'd like to give you guys comes from James 1 verses 2 through 4 and it says count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing I mean, I feel like that's pretty straightforward. When you're able to find your joy and when you're able to count it all joy, you are then able to understand that this is just a test of your faith. And the moment you are able to stay steadfast, remain steadfast in your faith, that is the moment that you are able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. Ephesians 3.20, because it's not you that's driving the situation, the circumstance, or the experience. You're then able to surrender, get still, get quiet, so that God himself can begin to move you in the ways that he sees fit. So all the glory comes back to him. It gives you peace of mind, but it also glorifies God. You're able to rest in his presence, and he's able to pick up whatever needs to be picked up in order to help you push forward with the purpose that he's given you. And lastly, the last joy gem that I want to share with you guys comes from Philippians 4.13. And it simply says this, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Oh, so good. 
man, I love the Bible. <laughs> Just dropping all the gems all the time. Um, so that concludes this week's episode, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found immense value from the conversation that was had. Um, if you are a stay-at-home mom, um, I would love to know what some of your challenges and obstacles have been or for you to share some parts of your stay-at-home mom journey with me as well as some of the things that are hindering you in your journey to purpose i'd love to have a discussion with about those things in the comments lastly if you are a mom now because i don't want to leave you hanging if you are a mother or a caregiver or someone you don't even have to be a mom who is on a journey to purpose and you are seeking more direction in your life you are seeking more clarity in your life you are looking to experience more joy gems and put yourself on a path for purpose um, in a way that brings you joy holla at your girl Visit my site, ericalassan.com, and there you will find resources, tons of resources to get started on your journey to purpose with step one, the Joy Quest, which is new and improved and available for your journeying pleasure. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it on this channel if you're watching it on YouTube. If you are listening, I would so, so appreciate it if you could subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening to it. And if you're listening to it on a platform where you could rate and comment, please do that as well. It would be wonderful to hear some of your feedback about the information that's being shared and how it's benefiting you in your journey to purpose. Otherwise, guys, that concludes this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to chatting with you guys next week as we journey together one feel-good thing at a time. Share this video with a friend if you liked it. Okay. If you liked it, subscribe. If you like it, subscribe. If you like it, subscribe. I got that from Lily saying, bye. <laughs>